Well, hello there, motherfuckers. Welcome back to Echo and Leo's Ranch, because why not? I am here on the 20, 26th of January, 2022. It's 3.20 p.m., and I'm getting into Echo again. So fucking fun. Okay, so if you remember, the last thing we experienced was the whole bathroom scene that I basically skipped through because I fucking hate that shit. I just... And then I was, like, freaking out because I thought, I was like, why is it still in the bathroom? Why is it still in the bathroom? You know, like, because, yeah. Anyway, now we're here. I don't know what day this is. I don't remember what day this is, but whatever. I'll find out <laughs> when the next day comes. Uh, Yeah. By morning, Leo seems to have perked up a little. It starts with some good news from Flynn. Carl had been in the crawl space. According to him, it had been too hot to sleep anywhere but there. Of course, it's fucking insane, but it's definitely something Carl might do. In better spirits, Lisa suggests we go out to get to his burger joint, to which I agree. And the way we chat about my project. So, obviously, I don't want to spend all our time just having fun. You have a project to do, after all. Yeah. Don't remind him that most of this messing around has been his idea. Oh, we do need to hang out with TJ today, if that's okay. I promised him we would yesterday. He, he's been feeling kind of down, obviously. I looked down on my sausage biscuit sandwich. Oh, the, the excess grease glistening in the sunlight shining through my window. I was sitting in the park. Yeah, that sounds like fun. So, what do you still need to do? Take a bite to give myself time to think. Mm, well... Honestly, I'm not too sure. The whole premise is about the body that was found in the mine. Yeah, what was that about? Well, I read about it on a website. Apparently, some guy's mutilated body was found in the mines, and everyone in the town lost their minds. Did you mean for that to rhyme, Chase? Because, uh, okay. Anyway, um... This is not, this is not Sam. This is not Sam and Jack. This is the first hysteria incident he's talking about here in the 1800s. Smoke Room takes place in 1915, so 100 years before this game. And we don't even know how long. I mean, I think it says something in the 1850s in Echo, but I don't remember the exact year that they say the first hysteria happened. But this is not the Smoke Room hysteria. Which just leads into the whole, you're only going in circles because Sam basically does the same thing and yada yada yada. <laughs> Website. Yeah. Uh, shouldn't you better source than that? Well, special the idea of your project is based off of that. I blush, someone like Leo chastising me about journalistic integrity is kind of embarrassing. Not that he's stupid, I guess I'm just used to feeling like the brains are a little dynamic. I mean, it's sighted, I just need to get back, just need to get the book, which is something else we'll need to do. Is it a library card? No. Wow, surprising. But I could sign up for one. Leo nudges me. Don't be bitter, I just want to do a good, just want to do a good job. I'm the one that went to college, I know what I'm doing. Leo laughs. No, I read a study about college kids. A study? Sounds like something you would know about considering you didn't go to college. Right, I knew it was about how college doesn't make you smart, just more liberal. <laughs> the one thing I agree with Leo on, and it has to be this, of course. Uh-huh, so is that a bad thing? Well, paying 20000 a year to get indoctrinated just doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> the one thing I agree with Leo on, and it's this. College th these days is literally a trap. Do not go to college. <laughs> it's a fucking trap, man. I frown. Is that why you stopped going, or have you just been looking up to- I've been laid up this size, make yourself feel better about quitting. Leo pauses. That's a strong word. I guess I just realized what I had was good enough. 
My dad makes more than most college grads, and he's teaching me the trade, too. You know, pauses, he changes the changes lanes around a massive 16-wheel car that looks like steel. And I'm already certified. Okay, where exactly are you going with this? I just want to make sure you're okay with that, is all. No, oh, well, I'm not Jenna. As long as you're doing what you want, I really don't care what it is you decide to do. Leo smiles. Well, good, and if we... You know, I'm not saying we ever will, but if we got together again, I'll be able to support you. Well, just don't make fun of everyone to college or what the greatest I had to go into. You know, you're a good enough writer already. You could have just started up a blog or something. What? I just read that that's what journalism is these days. Start sulking again. Maybe you should stop looking these things up. At least I'm learning to do something. It's not like I just got a degree in psychology and stopped there. Well, didn't you tell me you wanted to go into history? Isn't that worse? Let's just drop it. Leo looks at me out of the corner of his eye. Fuck off, Leo. You're not his love. Shula, I'm not making fun of you. Well, when someone starts sounding like my dad, I think that's a good time to end the conversation. Oh, you're not into that. Definitely not. <laughs> God, fuck that shit. We drive in silence for a while as Leo pulls out his food from the brown, grease-stained paper bag. Disgusting. As we're... <coughs> Sorry. As we're heading back, he nudges me. Hey, I have an idea. Toss with his mouth full and hand holding onto his sausage biscuit with the other, while the other steers. Are you asking me? Hey, both hands on the wheel. Leo chuckles as he switched from his orange juice carton with his steering paw before he connects with the wheel. Even when I'm in the car, you drive like shit. Damn, way more careful when you're with me. That makes me feel so much better. Good. He takes another huge bite. I wait only choose when he finishes, he takes another bite. You were saying? Oh well, yeah, I know you. Uh, I know those, tr you know those train tracks behind my yard. Didn't you say they were important somehow? Yeah, it could used to be an important junction. Well, why don't we go there and you can film some stuff? The rail yard is only like a five minute walk away. I think. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. He you know, smiles, panting a little in the heat, looking proud of himself. Oh, are you sure you just you, you don't you, you just don't want to go back there because you first kissed Chase there? Are you sure that's the, there? Mm. Fuck you, Leo. Cool, we'll go over there once we get back. There's not much left of the old train yard. The building that used to serve as the junction is basically gone, save for the foundation. There are two groups of abandoned freight cars with the, with the gold golden gate southwestern and shipped paint on the sides. I'm happy to see it since I'll be left with the scenery I'm trying to capture. After doing a few panning shots along with some close-ups of the car, I lean against an old freight car with my head back. If you can avoid using the same word in the same sentence, uh, do it, please. <laughs> I go lies against the heat. It's almost noon, so it's almost impossible to find any good shade out here. For some reason, it's only now that I'm realizing how stupid it was to do this so early. The sunset would have looked a lot better along with it being a lot cooler. Leo's been gone almost 20 minutes at this point. He said he was going to get some water bottles, but it's been a while. The sweat seeping into my shirt makes my skin crawl. After looking around, I peel it off and hang it up against a small metal ladder on the front one of the freight cars. Lean back into the exact same spot I was earlier, where it isn't burning hot, and resume closing my eyes. Vaguely, I wonder how many miles this thing has covered, how much of the country it's seen. The railway was closed down in the 60s, so it's at least over 50 years old. Unless they're just using Echo as a dump for one of train cars and left them there recently. A lot of old, a lot older than I am. There's something weirdly comfortable about leaning against something that's been through so much. Almost reassuring. It's like swimming in an old river, or, or a lake that's been around for millions of years. Something brief connected to things that are permanent. I, I wouldn't say that lakes and rivers are permanent, dude. That, that's not what I ever use to describe them. I hear a rustling through the grass on their side of the car, but I keep my eyes closed. Leo, well, I think I'm gonna die. I'm not built for the heat. No, he doesn't say anything. Leo? The rustling starts up again, a long, slow drag of the dry vegetation. 
This time it sounds like it's coming from under the train. Leo? I found out my eyes and stepped away from the car, turned around to look at it like I can see through it. What are you doing? Obviously he's trying to scare me. Leo was never as subtle as Jenna, but he did his fair share of at least trying. I lean over to look under the car, glaring. You know, if you're trying... I met with emptiness just under the car. Just dirt, good grass, and rustic rails. Is it some kind of animal? It sounded pretty big to be... Chase! Fuck! Heavy paw sends on my shoulder and I jump as Leo shouts right next to my head. So a 4B grabs me laughing. <laughs> Holy shit! I've never seen you jump that hard before! <laughs> Normally I'd be pissed, but that buildup just had me glad it was Leo. How the hell did you do that? Do what? The whole setup you did. Well, you see, first take my hand and slap it on your shoulder. No, the whole walking around behind me making that dragging sound under the, tr under the car. Huh? Leo looks confused. I frown. I guess it would be kind of impossible for someone Leo slides to sneak around like that without me seeing him. Did you hear something? Leo makes my earlier position and bends over to look under the train. Yeah, but there wasn't anything there. I thought you were trying to scare me. Well, I was, but I didn't do that. Probably some animal or something. There's a lot of wild wildlife, wild wildlife out here, you know. He stands up. Uh, it would have been a good idea, though. It sounded really heavy like a person. Could have been. You know, a lot of the weirder people around here come to come here to get drunk or high or whatever. Sounds fun. I must still look a little unnerved because Leo sits his hand on my shoulder. Well, I'm here now, so don't worry. Yeah, his eyes drift down to look at my- Oh my god! <sighs> Damn, you've kept in shape. Well, better shape. A smirk rubbing the shoulder. The swimming every day helps. Leo rubs my shoulder, grinning. Look good. You always say that. And I always mean it. Well, thanks. I've gotten to the point where I've just stopped pretending that there isn't at least something still there between us. I think I've stopped pretending that nothing's gonna happen on this trip eventually. What really worries me is what will happen after. Leo, meanwhile, slides, oh my fucking god. <sighs> fucking hell. I only hesitate for a moment. Oh my god. I believe you. So if you try and convince me isn't okay, right. Right, right, right. But you know I'm not into that. Get your okay. This fucking fucking stop. I'm not reading this shit. Jesus fucking Christ. Ew. 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 Okay, thank Christ, it's over. A saw crack to my right makes me jerk my head from the kiss to look over. Kudzu's standing there, his arms folded. Leo coughs in surprise, pulling back as well as wiping his muzzle. Uh, oh, uh, Kudzu, Kudzu, what's up? Raccoon's expression is hard to read as usual, but I see the corner of his muzzle will quirk up after a while. Not much. What's up with you? Oh, you know, stuff. The old laughs and finally Kudzu smiles. Hey, Kudzu. Speaking of feeling awkward, it's staying silent after Kudzu caught us like that. He nods in my direction. Chase, so what are you guys really doing out here? Seems like kind of a dumpy place to be doing that. Blush, but turn and point my camera bag, sit inside the opening of the car. I was filming for my project. This place is important to Echo's history. And I see. We could ask you the same thing. Well, I'm not exactly doing that, am I? Anyway, I just take walks sometimes. I fucking can't decide on a voice for this fucker. Well, not exactly doing that, am I? Anyway, I just take walks sometimes. My day is off. In the middle of the day? 
Usually. Nary his eyes at me, clearly thinking I'm suspicious. About something so I quickly add. I, I mean, it just gets so hot out here at this time of day, I die. Because you shrug your shoulders nonchalantly. I don't know, my girlfriend walks a lot. That's what I was doing last night when I found you two. Hey, thanks for stepping in last night. That could end it badly. Or two shrugs again. It would if I had to do something, didn't I? Well, we appreciate it. He wraps an arm around me and hugs. So, uh, how was he when he came to? Pissed, obviously. He always is. But he says some things last night. You should stay away from him for a while. Kaiju's normally plastered face shows some concern for the first time. What? He was saying he was gonna kill me? Well, this isn't light like it's not a big deal. Among other things. So I slick to me. I give a start. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he say some shit about Chase? Neil's hackles raising his seam starting to bare his teeth. Again, he was on some last night. He might even remember it, but I'm just warning you to be careful around him from now on. Because he looks back at Leo. Don't provoke him. I wouldn't if he wasn't your fucking asshat. Just ignore him. I swear to God, if he talked about doing shit to Chase. It tightens you more around me. Hey, I'll be gone in a few days. Don't worry about me. I'm worried about you. I'm just gonna get real. I'm get, just getting real tired of that meth skeleton messing with everything I do, and it fucking tries something with you. Leo. The air is tense, thick, and Vilio growling deep in his throat. Want to change the subject? I speak up. Uh, hey, Katsu, you know you're gonna go out to the park and hang. You wanna come? Thanks, but I think I'm good. Leo perks up from his brooding. You know what? I think that's a good idea. We're gonna play some soccer, but there's only gonna be three of us. You gotta leave it out. Katsu thinks. Mm, well, I suppose I could use a workout. I, I fucking vice. What was do I do for him? <laughs> you're just like TJ. I think you'll have to get along great. I don't really see Tejo and Kaiju getting along because, just because they're fitness conscious. They're practically night and day. Well, we're heading out right now. You want to come? Kaiju was for a second long before he nods his head in a quick jerk. All right, yeah, why not? With that, I gather up my equipment and we head back to Leo's house. It's not surprising that Kill Hard lays an inch of flat grass in the entire town. Leo says they're planning to lay down some saw next to the lake when the area is further developed, but as of now we have to settle for a park near Peyton. It's a plain stretch of grass, usually usually used for youth soccer games. In fact, I can remember when I was part of that same organization back when my stubby legs didn't matter as much. Of course, after a few years it became clear that, being an otter, I wasn't built for the sport. That's when I took up swimming, of course, but, but then I realized I wasn't really great at that either. Of course, I could have so many non-aquatic, but when it came to other otters, I was pretty much bomb with a barrel. So we drive, TJ sighs next to me. I look over at him, and he's got an elbow against the armrest, staring out the window as he pulls into the empty parking lot. Everything all right? TJ starts perk up, and he looks over at me, clearly forcing a smile. Uh, of course. You don't seem that way. What's up? I lean close to him. Leo's talking to Kudzu in the front, so we have some amount of privacy. Tidia looks down at his lap for a moment, then just shrugs. I think it's pretty obvious, Chase. This whole trip has been pretty... pretty bad. I have to counter that, that it hasn't been that bad, but he goes on. I just think it might have been the best if I hadn't come. I, I feel bad is all. The way he tries not to frown, but does anyway, is both heartbreaking and adorable at the same time. I automatically rest to Paul on his shoulder reassuringly. Sh sh stuff happens, right? We, we, we came here to have fun, and that's what, we're gonna, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's just that I feel bad for everyone else. What happened yesterday, I think it affected everyone. Oh, I had a great time with Leo yesterday. I wasn't sad at all. I realized what that statement might... It's gonna look like a total asshat, but Tita just nods as Leo perks the car. And we're here. As I reach the field, Kudzu immediately starts jogging the length of it while TJ stretches. I stand there awkwardly for a second, not really sure if I just joined them since 
That felt a little overboard for something so casual. At least, I hope it's casual. Leo rests a soccer ball against his hip as he joins me. You're so eager, huh? Apparently. Well, it's not a bad idea. I don't want to pull anything. So me and Leah do a few awkward stretches before the other two join us in the middle of the field. So, time to pick teams. There's only four of us. Shouldn't be too hard. You want to pick? Because he looks between us before his eyes settle on me. Chase. Okay. Probably best to keep the lovers off the same team to avoid distraction. I at least want a little bit of a challenge. Kudzu gives Leo a little smirk. I blush, but Leo smiles easily, rolling his eyes. It's not like that. Uh -huh, sure. So, I'm on Leo's team? Jay just hands up to Leo's side and puts him around his shoulders. Yep, you're lucky to have me. You know, in my country, we, have, we had a war over soccer once. I don't believe you. It's true, thousands died in the football. Fucking hell. Really? Wait, did you, do you call it football? Because that seems pretty confusing to turn to the other football. I live here now, so football is soccer and what? Wait, what? Ugh, Chica, let's just start. As he looks around. Since there's so few of us, why don't we just play half field? Every few are asked to mark the goal. After that's when we start playing, and for me, it's pretty much a disaster. TJ, of course, dominates all of us. <laughs> Excuse me, Jesus. He dodges around with ease, making me look like an idiot as I spin around trying to catch him, falling on my ass more than once. Kaiju was able to hold his own for the most part, but TJ gets, pa gets a passion without, without much difficulty. I think the real links really so bad these Venus after a while and starts to ease off. He passes it to Leo more often and only really steps in to get near the goal. Leo, while big, is slow as hell and actually manages to steal the ball from him a few times. I also think it's because he's not taking this seriously at all because he keeps laughing and slapping with his tail when I run past. At one point, when the score, with the score at like 7-0, I managed to get near the goal. TJ jogs in, and I take the ball clumsily, and it's so clear that he misses on purpose, everyone bursts out laughing as I roll into the net. TJ frowns. What? That was a great kick, Chase. I lean over the rest of my hands on my knees as I gasp for breath. If you're gonna let me score, you have to make it more convincing than that, man. Also, I'm not five, I can only get my ass kicked. After a while, we switch up teams with TG on my side and Kudzu and Leo together. It's a bit more even after that, with me being TG's handicap after all. After about half an hour, we call it quits and head back to the parking lot where Leo throws us water bottles. I wipe my face as I sit on one of the parking blocks. Even though it's early evening, the weather is still way too damn hot. Leo and TG are already up again, TG showing him some of the moves he had so viciously used on me. I'm glad to see that TJ, was, TJ is somewhat happy again. His ears are up and he's smiling as he runs circles around Leo. Hey, how am I supposed to learn anything you're just using them on me? Just trying to make it look dumb, eh? Sorry, sorry, alright. First thing you need to do... I notice Kudzu standing a few feet away watching along with me. So, I guess you've known Leo since you moved to Echo? Kudzu looks over at me before leaning back into Leo's van. Yeah, he saw me moving in and insisted on helping me out, so that's how I met him. Sounds like Leo. Because he tries to take a tip. Because he takes a swig from his water bottle. He's a good guy. Definitely. So, you used to live here, right, in Peyton? Unfortunately, I guess Leo told you. Yeah. I also remember Leo saying that some bad things had happened in the city and for the raccoon. So I wonder if I should press or not. Hey, sorry if it seemed like I was making fun of your name a few days ago. It's a cool name, just different, you know? Because he smirks. No, I know it's weird. You just caught me at a bad time is all. <laughs> Kudzu is the name of a freaking invasive plant species. And you see it all over Georgia. It's fucking insane. Trust me, when you go up into the mountains, here, near the mountains, it's fucking everywhere. It's insane. 
I spread my legs outside as my knees pop. Ugh, I'm not built for running around. Well, yeah, you're built for swimming. Where's my eyebrows at his bluntness? It's not really a species thing to say, but most people just don't don't often point out a species aptitude. Um, so I guess I wonder why you moved to Echo. It's such a dump. As you saw it for a while. In the meantime, you watch Leo fall on his ass after TJ kicks the ball between his legs. People, that fucking hell. Huh? People are the reason, people are the reason I live Peyton. What the fuck? I can't get his voice correctly. Jesus. Oh. Peyton is technically a small city with just 70,000 people. Compared to Pueblo, that's nothing. More people there are there. More people there admit worse it is. It's the same anywhere. Okay. Fritzy goes on. Sure, in Echo there's a hundred shitty people, in Peyton there's 50,000 of them. I prefer Echo. His tone is so dark at this point that I don't even respond. Something definitely happened here in Peyton, and I don't dare ask what it was. Luckily, I'm safe in awkward silence as Leo haphazardly kicks the ball in our direction, Leo, and TJ comes running up to us. Damn it, alright, I think that's enough for today. He chugs over wiping his face. Man, I need to take a shower. Are you two getting along? Because he didn't say anything, I pipe up. Yep. Leo frowns, clearly, something's, clearly sensing something's wrong. Well, okay, and he... Anyway, let's go out and get some ice cream. I'm really craving it. Stand up slowly, knees popping again as we all pile into the car. As we drive, TJ continues to stare out the window, but his ears are up, and he doesn't seem so depressed anymore. Lean over towards him. Feeling better? Theaters look at me, smiling. Yeah, it was fun playing with you guys. A grin. You're insanely good. He shakes his head. Nah, I can be other guys at school. I'm not aggressive enough, but it's fun. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. TJ nods. It's too bad we can't come back and do it again tomorrow. Hmm, why not? Not that I'm crazy about doing it again, but I'm not sure what would prevent it. He looks at me. Well, your project. Frown. I don't think... Hey, what flavor, what flavor do you guys want? Leo practically shouts back at us. Look around, we aren't even at the ice cream parlor yet. That doesn't seem to matter to TJ, though. Oh, cookie dough, it's been so long since I've had this, since I've had it. Really? I don't know you like that flavor. Somehow Leo's able to keep up the conversation about ice cream flavors all the way to the actual ice cream parlor. I decided the shots I got earlier in the day were too bright, not representative of the sad state of the town that I wanted. The setting sun does a better job of capturing the desolation and bittersweet depression of it all, a metaphor for an end in a way. At least that's how I hope it comes across. I lean back into the old rusted car, clicking through the images I'd taken. It feels very quiet, and despite the wildfire around, despite the wildfire, the wildlife around me. And so that's why it's easy for me to pick out the footsteps headed in my direction. First I think it's Leon, I wonder how he's finished up with his shower so quickly. But then I realize that the crunch of dry vegetation is too soft, too light to be Leo. I look up, kind of hoping to see Kaiji open stem view with the side of Clint, headed in my direction. Ah, oh boy. My grip tightens on the camera watching as he approaches around the bed in the tracks. He doesn't see me at first, so he gets to the tracks. He hops onto one of the metal rails and balances there, walking along while he's on a tightrope. Does everyone in Echo just come here and take a walk? I think about walking around the train car out of his line of sight and hide until he passes me. While I'm thinking this, he loses his balance and stumbles off the rail, and that's when he looks up. Of course, I'm the first thing he sees. He both just sort of stand there watching each other. I don't know what to do. Cud said Clint probably didn't remember anything from last night, but I'm not willing to bet on this. It does look like he's not even sure I am, though. His eyes are squinted, almost shut, mouth all screwed up as he scratches his head comically. He leans forward, almost to the point of falling over again. Definitely on something. At that moment, a look of recognition spreads across his face and his mouth opens wide. And he starts jogging straight for me. The abruptness of the movement startled me and almost dropped the camera. 
angle myself away from the car so I'm not backed up against it and start taking steps back as it gets closer. He stops, though, about ten feet away and points at me. Hey, I know you! Uh, I'm at a loss for what to say. He's wobbling back and forth, his eyes wide open. Your name! There's an awkward pause. I try to determine whether or not he's asking the question. My name? Chase? Why did I tell him that? You're Leo's... You're Leo's bag friend. God, uh... Distracted again because that's when I see the handle of pistol just poking out from the front of it. The waistband of Clint's jeans. Clint glares. Fucking Leo, why do you hang out with that creep? I, uh... I'm looking around, trying to decide the best way of escape because he loses it. I mean, he's always saying shit to me about... Always saying shit about my dad. And he, he's, he had a fucking perfect life and he rubs into my goddamn face. Take a few innocuous steps back so that the end of the car is right next to me and he's have to duck behind it. I don't think Leo's life was that easy. It was pretty bad back in his country. Nope. Couldn't go home and be happy. Couldn't go outside and be happy. I couldn't be happy anywhere. He sneers at me. And you, you fuck him, don't you? Just stare at him and don't say anything. I feel like anything I say could set him off, but he waits patiently, expecting an answer. Clint? Don't you? He shudders visibly, clenching his eyes shut. Fucking imagine you looking as fat ass as disgusting. I don't fucking care that you're fagging around, but with him. It wasn't a so afraid little situation. I probably would have laughed just then. Take another step back. Hey, I was actually just about to head out. You know, I'm doing this project. That's why I'm here. He glares at me. Me and Leo broke up a few years ago. We're just friends. You don't know what he's like. The things he did to me, it was... It's way worse than what I ever did to you. Hey, I do need to head out. We can talk about this later. He sees me stepping around the car and merely his hand shoots to handle his gun. Hey! I freeze watching his hand preparing to throw myself to the ground if he pulled it out. At the same time, I'm praying that he'll shoot his dick off if he does. He glares at me. The hell are you even doing out here anyway? Shaking hands, I point to the camera around my neck. I told you, I'm t t doing a project. Try to smile as I hold it up. Just about, Echo. What the fuck is there to say about it? His hand loosens on the pistol and I manage to steady my voice enough to actually speak. Well, there's a history to it, you know? There's history to everything. I'm just trying to figure it out. Clint looks around, seeming to forget about his gun. Oh, like, like this railroad? Yeah, I like this railroad. His eyes are vacant as he stares at the ground. I think I'm making a run for it again. Oh! I jump as he snaps his head up. My dad once told me that this guy, that his dad knew a guy that got killed here back in like the 50s. Oh? Despite the fact there's a crazy meta in front of him with a gun, I still find myself becoming interested. Yeah, like some guy was trying to hop on one, like way back. That when that's how people get around. So this guy was just trying to hop on the train here when he was leaving the station, but he missed jumping on. He sits down with the dry and dusty weed and spreads his leg out, lays out over the rails. And he falls down like this, and it runs over his legs. Ben brings both hands down and chopping motions over his thighs. Blood goes everywhere, and yeah, he's dead, right? He looks up at me, and I realize he's actually waiting for an answer. I guess his questions are never rhetorical. Uh, I'd assume so, right? Wrong. They found me a few hours later, and some other fucker's still alive. Oh. Or he's starting to doubt this story, or at least this version of it. Stumps, the stumps is packed with dirt, so he stopped the bleeding. But he's gone crazy by now. He's been going on about some creature that came to him and spoke whispers in his ear. At the very least, I can just stick this story somewhere slow in the project, keep things somewhat interesting. One of those local urban legends type stuff. But when he goes to the hospital and they think he's going to live, but he jumps out the fucking window and kills himself. Clint stands up and brushes himself off. 
My dad used to tell me that story a lot. Not like I wanted to hear it, but he liked telling me things I didn't want to hear. Don't quite know what to say to that, but I want to keep on his good side so we can show pulling out, pulling out a pulling notebook out of my bag. Well, thanks, Clint. That actually helps out me out a lot. Clint is still off in his own world, staring at the sunk trees in the distance. It's weird that you needed to hear that story because... I can't come here because of it. Closure or something? Because of the guy. Sometimes I think I see him when I'm all high. And I hear things here too. It's scary, but I do it anyway because it's different. In this town, everything's always the same, but you can make it change if you want. At that point, he starts walking again off the tracks and towards the group of trees. I decided I decidedly don't follow him. I said hurriedly, making my way back to Leo's house. Oh, fuck, man. That shit is fucked. You know, I'm really fucking glad that they're actually painting Clint as somewhat sympathetic. Because... Seriously, there's only one character that's human in this game that deserves the absolute worst score, and that's Brian. Clint doesn't deserve that. <laughs> I have a lot of time to calm down and walk back. Leo is splayed out on his couch, picking through a TV dinner on his lap. There you are, I wanted I warmed one up for you too, but it's probably cold by now. It's alright, I'll just uh put it back in. Leo watches me head into the kitchen adjacent to the living room. Hey, what's up? My dinner is still on the stove top to make an effort not to wrinkle my nose at the sculpted rib meat covered in barbecue sauce. Watery mashed potatoes covered with the gooey mess. Nothing, just tired is all. Toss the dinner back in the microwave and set the time for two minutes. As it's warming and I turn back around to lean against the counter and face Leo in the living room. Hey, I was wondering something. Hmm? Leo looks back up at me, he's falling back a little. It's about Clint. Leo's brow furrows. I mean, you guys are at each other's throats. I know there's always been some animosity between you two, but don't remember being this bad. Frown. It's practically want each other dead. Leo pins his ears back down, he lifts barbecue sauce off his fingers. I really don't know, Chase. If I had to say, I think it would be the drugs. The drugs? Mm, whatever he's taking, it's pretty hardcore. I mean, he's a goddamn skeleton now, right? Yeah. But it's not like I'm responsible for it. I just treat him like he treats everyone else. Oh, my owl mouth hesitate and finally ask what's been bothering me. When we were younger, would you say that you bullied him? Leo frowns. What's bringing all this up? Nothing, I'm just curious is all. Leo starts to smooth down the fur and his head all poofed out from the shower. I mean, I wasn't nice, of course, but he possessed everyone else. Like I said, I did to him what he did to others. Coughs. Maybe a little worse. Worse? What he did was pretty bad, though. He would try to bring me a cigarette once. See, when you tell me shit like that, I don't feel bad for any of the things I did, 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 did do with a worthless ass. Now that right there is a lack of empathy. That is a lack of empathy right there, fucker. Sociopath. I'm safe for having to respond to that as the timer goes off. I turn around to pull my food out of the microwave before grabbing a plastic fork and sitting down next to Leo. We eat in a slightly awkward silence. By the time I'm almost finished, I'm feeling a little nauseous. Not to be rude, but do you always eat this stuff? Huh? He wakes up with a mouthful of mashed potatoes. It's microwavable dinner stuff. He swallows loudly. Yeah, you don't like it? He lowers his ears again, looking embarrassed. It's fine, I mean, it's just... sad. I look at him sheepishly. <laughs> you little fucker, I get better feuds sometimes, it's just easier. Yeah. Frag a plastic fork with the flaky potatoes. And what qualifies as better food? The diner? Hey, looking can afford it. It's, I make good money. I laugh. This isn't about money, I just think you're lazy. Leo mock growls and leans over to grab me. 
I yelp theatrically and try to hold my stray steady as he yanks me sideways to lay down against him, our, hand, our heads in the armrest. Hey, I gotta throw in the tray. It's only gross tea when you dinner water. Land nuzzles into my neck. Mm, put it on the floor. Ew, gross. You can throw it away when I'm ready to get up. Since when do you decide when I can or can't get up? Since you decided to mouth off to me, now you're the one who's gonna be cooking all my meals and clean up my house, Chula. Jesus fucking Christ, he's not your lover! Fucking hell, don't- I shiver in his mother's while spooning me tighter, of course he does. Of course he does. Of course he fucking does! Est- what? Estoy loco po- I don't fucking know. I don't know Spanish. He rolls the R dramatically. Definitely taking advantage of it. We're both too tired to do anything more, which is probably for the best, and within a few minutes I passed out. Oh boy, the train yard. The fucking real- Fra- Oh shit. Oh shit, it's Friday. Oh shit, okay, um... <laughs> this is where shit hits the fan. This is where shit hits the fan. If I know anything about this part, uh... If I know anything about Lena's route, part- Friday is fucking long. So, thanks for watching. But, uh, we're done. I'm done for today. Um, I, I can't. Nah. Nah. Friday's probably gonna be, like, at least almost three hours long, for what I remember. 